Let's get more now on our top story. Jeremy Corbyn has outlined a significant shift in Labour's Brexit policy by advocating that the UK form a customs union with the EU if his party wins power. Well, let's go live now to Westminster where we can speak to the former Shadow Europe Minister and Open Britain supporter, Pat McFadden, and to the chairman of Labour Leave, John Mills. Uh, Pat McFadden, to you first of all. Uh, this is, has been dubbed uh, the cake and eat it speech. Well, I welcome what Mr Corbyn said on uh, customs union today. I think it's important for manufacturing industries, which often these days have international supply chains and you know, leaving the customs union would have been hugely problematic for those. And as a West Midlands MP, I care very much about that. I also welcome it from the point of view of avoiding a hard border between Northern Ireland and the Republic of Ireland, because no one so far has said how we meet that commitment to avoid a hard border while leaving the customs union. So I think this is a welcome move. I think it's an overdue move. I wish it had been made some time ago. But nevertheless, on the customs union today, I think Jeremy Corbyn has done the right thing both for the economy and for that commitment to avoid a hard border in Ireland. Mm. Uh, well, let's bring in John Mills. Uh, do you welcome this clear statement from Labour about what they do stand for in terms of Brexit? Well, I think it's a load of problems here. Uh, one is that I think that uh, the 52 per cent of the population who voted for leave uh, in June 2016 aren't going to think that staying in the customs union is, is coming out of the European Union. And I think also that the single market is so inextricably bound up with the uh, customs union that it's going to be very difficult to avoid staying in both if you're in, in one. Uh, obviously, there are disadvantages. Uh, in terms of us not being able to strike de trade deals with other countries. Uh, but if we're locked also into the uh, single market, then we've got all the problems around our heavy annual payments, around the jurisdiction of the Luxembourg court, uh, and all the other problems that uh, were pe were, were people, were, people were concerned about during the referendum. Um, so I, I think we'd have been far better off to have uh, started off by coming out of both the customs union and the single market, as indeed the Prime Minister suggested, and negotiating a free trade deal uh, from outside rather than trying to stay inside. I think one final point is that I think it's very unlikely that we're going to get the sort of derogations from the customs union or the single market that Jeremy Corbyn was talking about this morning, in which case it's going to be difficult to carry out the Labour manifesto if we have a Labour government. Let's put some of these points to Pat McFadden. Is it a betrayal, uh, Pat McFadden, of the 52% uh, who voted that way? No, there are. You, you, we're talking about being outside the European Union, but coming to a customs union deal with the European Union. Turkey has an arrangement like this. I'm not saying it would be the exact, exactly the same as Turkey's, but it can be done from outside. And, you know, there is nothing about being in the customs union or indeed being in the single market that would stop Labour implementing its manifesto with regard to uh, state ownership or uh, any issues like that. There are plenty of countries inside the European Union and the single market that have state ownership of railways and other industries. Uh, it is not the case that you can't do any of these things while you're inside the single market. So I think today's is a welcome move. I think there are others that we can make. But we had a manifesto to put jobs in the economy first. And we've done that today, as well as the Northern Ireland peace process, by saying that we will, in effect, stay in a similar customs union arrangement to what we have at the moment. John Mills, uh, the argument from Labour is also that it will give certainty to business. Is that a certainty that you would welcome, or, or do you think it's a missed opportunity if we kiss goodbye to the opportunity of doing new trade deals ourselves with other countries? Well, I mean, I'm sure that uh, business does want certainty. The problem is whether this sort of uh, speech is going to produce that. I mean, I think the difficulty is that, and this applies to the Conservatives just as much as to the Labour, is that both of them want a deal with the European Union, which I don't think the European Union is going to agree to. They want to have all the benefits of the customs union and the single market without the downsides. And I just don't believe that the European Union is going to agree to these sort of derogations because that will upset the delicate balance that uh, both the single market and the customs union entail. And they just won't want to, to see the instability uh, and insecurity that that would uh, generate.
Mm. Uh, that's a fair point, isn't it, Pat McFadden, that, you know, this might be on Labour's wish list, but, but whether or not Europe will go for it is an entirely different thing. Uh, why, why has it taken Labour so long to reach this point, do you think? Well, I think that's a good question. I wish we'd reached this point some time ago. As I said, I think this move is, is overdue. I mean, I'm not party to the discussions within the shadow cabinet on this. Uh, so I don't really know why it's taken so long. It could have been done some time ago. I'm glad it's been done. I mean, in terms of trade deals, by staying inside a customs union with the European Union, we'll have the huge advantage of not having to renegotiate 50-odd trade deals that the EU has already negotiated with countries like Canada, South Korea. There's one uh, on the table with Japan, which is hugely important, and perhaps others in the future. And we'll be doing so as... Uh, an organisation of 500 million consumers together. So I think that this move will give us considerably more strength when it comes to trade deals than the uh, sort of Brexit fantasy of breaking free from all that and somehow being able to start all this from scratch again. Mm. Uh, John Mills, what about uh, staying um, in the single market? Jeremy Corbyn did say that, that he would definitely want to stay within the single market for the transition period, potentially for longer, how does that square with, with Labour voters who wanted to leave if, if staying in the single market means free movement of people? Well, I think a lot of them are going to be very disappointed indeed and, and with considerable justification. I mean, the staying in the single market entails both uh, having no border control, it entails paying large sums of money to the EU every day, it involves us being involved with the Luxembourg court, uh, it involves large amounts of regulation over our economic and commercial activities in this country. And I just don't think that's what people voted for in, in 2016. It's extraordinary that we're, here we are, the fifth or sixth biggest economy in the world, and we're going to have lost control over large sections of our commercial, economic and other activity. This seems to me to be bizarre and not what most people voted for in 2016. Pat McFadden, what about those voters, you know, especially those up in the north who, who resigned, who resoundingly voted to leave. Is this really what you think they wanted to hear from the Labour Party? Well, we said we would put jobs in the economy first in our manifesto, and I think that was absolutely the right thing to Sorry do. Sorry to interrupt, Pat, but do, but do you think staying in the single market will mean that the that, that jobs and the economy in the UK are better or worse? Or better, I think, uh, certainly. If you look at the government's economic uh, assessments, uh, released a couple of weeks ago, not some pro-European think tank, but the government that's actually in charge of Brexit, they clearly said that if you want to minimise the economic damage from leaving the European Union, you should stay in both the single market and the customs union. I think that's right, and I think but, that that's, that's what not puts Brexit, jobs... Is it? it is Brexit, because you don't have to be part of the European Union institutions to do that. It's something we would have to negotiate. Look, basically, the choice is this. You can either have high market access with high obligations, or you can have low market access with low obligations. What you can't have, which the government has been trying again and again, and this is the cake and eat it strategy, is to have high access with low obligations. You're simply not going to get that. And on the left, the argument is this. We can't pretend that somehow we can isolate the Brexit discussion over here while getting on with plans to increase spending on health, education, housing and so on. Because if we make a move that damages economic growth, we simply won't have the money to do the public investment that we want to do in those services. So the discussion has to come together. It can't be separated out, one thing separate from another. Let's, let's put the most point to, to John Mills. Uh, John, do, do you believe that, that retaining a customs union and possibly staying in the single market is Brexit, is what people voted for? No, no I don't think it is. I, th I think they voted for much more control than that. Um, I, I just comment on the report that was produced a week or so ago uh, about the supposed downsides of being outside the single market and the customs union. I mean, this has come from the same stable as the reports that we had previously about how the economy was going to tank, it was going to go down by 3.6%, we were going to have half a million unemployed, and actually the employment went up by 400,000. I mean, I think you've got to take all that with a pinch of salt. It depends what assumptions you put in, the results you uh, get out. Uh, but also, I'm not at all convinced that all our relationship with the EU is that beneficial anyway. We've got a huge balance of payments deficit with them, sucking demand out of the economy. 
Uh, I'm not sure that uh, staying in this arrangement is going to do anything to produce the resources that Pat McFadden was talking about just now. We shall see John Mills and Pat McFadden. Thank you both very much for joining thank us. You.